Hello everyone, my name is Sylvain Rochon here with a glimpse of the future leading to many opportunities for the bold who wish to change the world. Hopefully that's you. Uh, today we'll be talking about the creation of new transplant organs that don't cause any immune responses, uh, either, whether they are bionic or organic. We'll talk about both. Now immune responses are, are, are very natural if you have a foreign thing in your body. Uh, like somebody else's heart, for example, in a transplant situation, then your immune system will try to reject it. That's why people that receive heart transplants uh, need to take lots of heavy medicines to suppress the immune system, and that causes a whole slew of problems uh, for them, and uh, it's pretty nasty. So, uh, but if they want to live with the transplanted organs, they have to do that. And that's a consequence of trying to live with a failed organ and somebody else's thing inside your body, right? Uh, now, some great advances in, in science have, uh, have occurred, <laughs> like uh, creating bionic um, organs. Uh, we have one example that is linked below, which is the bionic pancreas. Uh, as you know, the pancreas is, uh, produces glucagon and insulin. Insulin will uh, reduce your blood sugar level to a little bit lower level and feeds the cells that transform the, the you know, sugar into energy. Uh, and glucagon essentially will take stored energy, like glucose, from the from the liver, and put it back out into the um, uh, into the bloodstream to increase the blood level and keep it high. So we have these two hormones that are produced by the pancreas that keeps the blood sugar level at an even rate, uh, at an even even level, uh, and that's really important for to avoid a whole bunch of problems that diabetics, that type one diabetics that don't have a functioning pancreas suffer today and they're really really serious if you want to know more about the seriousness of that i recommend you read my blog which has more information anyhow uh, this bionic pancreas uh, measures the, the the blood sugar level just like the body does and then it injects either glucagon or insulin from an outside battery operated pack with a little needle a uh, subdermal needle um, depending on the blood sugar level of the individual uh, dynamically and constantly so it's a wearable like a belt wearable kind of deal and you have little sensors and a little sensor and that is sub uh, subdermal which is underneath the skin a little bit and you have a little needle that is under the skin as well and uh, and the, the bionic uh, organ kind of does its job from outside the body great idea uh, what we would like to do though is to try to remove the little needle things um, because there's there's Potentially, there's a lot of research that, that focuses on trying to sense things from a breath, uh, also using light to kind of gauge like um, levels of, uh, of some molecules inside the blood, but from the outside, like optically, things like that. Maybe they, there's a way for you guys to figure out how to measure blood sugar levels but without the insertion of a sensor on the, under into the skin. That would be even more comfortable. That would be great. And also perhaps a what, what's called superdermal injections of, uh, uh, of the appropriate hormones. So without piercing the skin, perhaps uh, with a needle constantly, perhaps there's a way to insert um, these hormones inside this, uh, through the skin without piercing it. Uh, and there are indeed ways to do that. Um, I, I've seen it in, in research, but you guys can figure out the, the better way to go about it. And that would make this, this particular organ, perhaps, perhaps other uh, bio bionic organs, <laughs> even better for the people that have to use them. Now, even better than bionic is the biological. Like if you take a stem cell from your fatty tissue, and we can do that, and you can re-differentiate it, well, actually differentiate it, not re-differentiate it, into, uh, into different tissues, which we can do, uh, and mold it in the right shape, for whatever organ you need, then you can create organs that are custom made outside of you know the uh, person's body, just like in the lab, and then you can reimplant that uh, those those organs inside the person, and the, uh, the there would be no immune response because the cells actually belong to the actual patient, to this specific patient, and uh, the organ would es essentially belong to them, and you just put it in there, sew it, and then it will grow. Uh, veins uh, and, and, um, and arteries and different uh, different elements that uh, that it needs to kind of keep the uh, the tissue intact and, and functioning, and uh, 
Believe it or not, believe it or not, we've been able to do some of that in lab and even experimentally with uh, with animals and uh, in some cases for cartilage like you know nose and ears. Um, we've been doing it with hu with humans. We've been also doing it. We've done a bladder. Uh, we've done um, uh, also bone and muscle transplants in such a way uh, with people uh, at, at a very small scale. And then we have experimented with more complex organs like hearts and kidneys and things like that in the lab. Uh, just not on people just yet, just on small animals and things like that. And there, it's very, very promising. So we can do that. So in the near future, we can develop this. And, you know, we don't really, perhaps we don't really need the bionic stuff. We can just grow the right organ right off the, right off the bat. And maybe the bionic stuff can be a temporary measure because it's off the shelf, right? It's, you you don't have a heart instead of being on a waiting waiting list or, or life support we give you a bionic heart that's outside like there would be a pump that would be outside the body like i don't know why not and we have some that are inside the body of course as you know and we uh, we've worked on um I, heck i've worked in the lab <laughs> on on making the coating of the artificial heart um uh not responsive to the immune system or well, the immune system doesn't respond to it uh, I've done that when I was at university, um, so that was a while ago. Um, so, so there's all this stuff that's going on that's really exciting for to to heal a whole bunch of problems. Uh, so, I, I'm hoping some of you will go out there and do more research, and find applications, and put it out into the market. Now, what's been uh, holding a lot of this stuff up since it involves stem cells is that in the West there's a lot of political and religious lobbying. Uh, to prevent using the stem cells, because mostly because of uh, thinking about believing in God and you know all, all the stuff that obviously has no place in science. And me, uh, I mean, we should work for the benefit of, you know, of humanity and people and make them healthy, and that would be the that should be the priority, not these ethical questions. That I mean, ethical is letting people die. Unethical is letting people die. Sorry. <laughs> so, so let's help progress this, um, you know, the transplanting of real organs with stem cells and the bionic counterparts. They're both useful. They're both great. And that takes entrepreneurs like yourself and uh, supporters like yourself to, to, to write about it and to say, hey, this is a great idea. Let's do more of that. Anyway, that's it for now. If you want more helpful insights on how to benefit making and making the world into a better place, please comment below, uh, share, and of course, subscribe to the channel to hear more, uh, more uh, notes like these in the future. I'll see you next time in the future today. Ciao for now.